Palm Sunday. What a wonderful day it is to have you here. Beautiful sunshine outside. We give thanks to God that the fire, the hogback fire didn't uh, spread any more than it did. I was uh, on the phone with some of you uh, hearing about your text to plan to evacuate. And then when the order was lifted, um, I got to learn that as well, too. I wanted to let you know Bishop Jim Gonya had contacted me and was holding all of you in prayer as well and wanted me to share that with you. They live not so far away, too, so they were also watching what was going on. Well, we have an exciting day today. We welcome new members into the life of Lutheran Church of the Master. Following a fun fellowship, we have a congregational meeting with a congregational vote for you to vote on your new settled pastor. Exciting times. There's uh, flowers here on both sides, and these are from the Celebration of Life for Joe Kirchberg that was held in your worship space yesterday. And um, Joe would have been proud. I say it often that this congregation has an amazing funeral ministry and indeed you do. You did very well yesterday. So thank you for that. Tomorrow, we celebrate the marriage of Dave Mullen and Sari Warren, and we're looking forward to that. You know, God's ministry at LCM is bold. There might be some churches that wouldn't do a wedding during Holy Week, right? But if anything we learned with COVID was that we can't depend that we can get together whenever we want to and as often as we want to. So if it's a time to celebrate life and love, by golly, we're going to do it. And so you're all invited to that tomorrow as well. And then uh, one final note is, does everybody have a palm branch? Did everybody? Good. So wave it as often as you want through, uh, throughout the worship service. Uh, during the songs, during the liturgy, wave it as often as you want. And then, if you would like, when you come forward for communion, if you would like to toss it here on the floor in front of the altar, feel free to do that as well, too, foreshadowing, foreshadowing the week to come. So, all right. Thank you, Joyce. I invite you to stand as you are able. We begin with our call to worship. As Jesus entered the mighty city of Jerusalem, the crowds welcomed him with glad and joyous shouts. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. As the people welcomed Jesus into their midst, so let us welcome him in our hearts. Let us now greet the Lord with joy and worship him with gladness. Amen.
Let us come together to a moment of confession. Imagine Jesus, as he entered Jerusalem some 2,000 years ago, envision the palm branches, the donkey, the shouts of Hosanna, understanding who he is and knowing who we are. Let us take a moment of silence for confession. Almighty God, we gather this morning with loud praises to Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yet there are times when these same lips that praise you also speak cruelly to another. There are times when we tell of your great love, then fail to share that love with our neighbor. There are times when we call on you for mercy and grace only to judge and disparage others. Oh God, we know of our sins, and we ask that you forgive us. Help us to live lives of praise by the way we speak to others. Help us to reflect the love and grace of Christ by the way we treat one another. We pray in faith and for the sake of Christ's present and coming kingdom. Amen. Friends, God's steadfast love endures forever. There is no wall high or thick enough to separate us from the love of God. Jesus marched into Jerusalem to save us, and save us he did, he will. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins have been forgiven. Amen. We have the praise song from the choir.
first reading this morning is from Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. In this reading, Paul is quoting from an early Christian hymn that describes Jesus' humble obedience in his incarnation as a human being, even to death, and his exaltation and glory as Lord of all. Here's the reading. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross." Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew the 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethagy at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him and that followed and were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I have always loved Palm Sunday, especially as a little girl. And the south azaleas were blooming. Spring was well on its way, you know, especially in that area. Days were longer and warmer. And on this special day, the church of my youth highlighted ministry of the children. Oh, we knew every day that Jesus loved us. But on Palm Sunday, with a waving of the palm branches and the children coming through the church, through the aisles, the church, children were featured. We just felt warm with joy. And to add to that special feeling um, that I've had for Palm Sunday all these years, I joined the church on a Palm Sunday many years ago. I was so excited. I wore, it was a store-bought dress. My mother made all our clothes, and they were beautiful. But this one, you know, it was white. I had white stockings and white patent shoes. Man, I was styling. And so that added to all the good feelings. And then for Easter the next week, it came with bright orange polka dotted jacket that went over it. I'm telling you. It was in later years that I realized the awkwardness of this day, of Palm Sunday. And several, I have lots of awkward stories I could share with you today. It could go on, but I just have one, I'll tell you. In several previous congregations, the tradition was to line up outside the building with our palm branches 
and, uh, you know, that we would start singing and we'd march around through the parking lot and the sidewalk and then head into the church. Well, the people who were leading the singing, you know, as uh, together we were all bunched and started out and that was great. But then as we started marching, the, it got, and the singers were ahead and then they went into the church and the rest of us were going like that. So awkward, because those of us who like making a jo joyful noise sure shouldn't be leading singing for the rest of the group. But I think, you know, maybe feeling awkward is an appropriate emotion for Palm Sunday. Although I can tell you that those of us who plan worship services for this day never intentionally try to make them awkward, but it was awkward on that first one long ago when the crowds were waving their palm branches, the crowds had heard that, that, that age-old story that the Messiah was going to come and save them. They were expecting a king, and it was high time too, for Rome's authority was heavy-handed, and their religious leaders had no real comfort to offer. But the kingdom Jesus proclaimed well, it was almost unrecognizable when held up against the crowd's expectation. This disappointment led to the crowd's fickleness. And less than a week later, some of them were the same ones shouting, Crucify him! Which makes it awkward even for us now. We start the week with loud hosannas, waving our palm branches with jubilation, knowing the rest of the story. Next Sunday, Easter Sunday, it's a good thing. It'll, it's even a great thing. But first, we have a whole lot of story to get through this week. And we all might wonder, maybe with just a little bit of guilt, how can we join in the throngs, waving palm branches, knowing what lies ahead, and even questioning what our shouts have changed from Hosanna to crucify him? Then we have coming up the shock and the anger as Jesus started stirring things up in a, well, in a personal way, turning over the tables in the area around the worship space. What was he thinking? Scattering tables, scattering money, scattering sacrificial animals, maybe even scattering a few people upsetting the status quo of temple business and setting into place the treachery that would move him towards the cross. We can ask, what role might we have played when the disciples all gathered for that last supper? Would we be like those sleepy disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, nodding off, while our Lord is calling us to action. Would we, could we be like Peter in the garden when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus and he was annoyed and even angry? And are we when someone threatens us, threatens our Lord, our faith, our church? Only to later deny this same Lord with our words and our actions or our lack of words, our lack of actions, when we are needed the most. We celebrate now with our palm branches and shouts of Hosanna, feelings unsettled. Yes, and a little awkward, because we do know what lies ahead. As we travel through this week, through the solemnness of the journey towards the cross, there is an awkwardness that settles in our soul. And you know, really, as Christians, as Christ followers, much of what we are to do, what we're called to do, is awkward. It's an awkward, counter-cultural way of living. You think about it, throughout his short time in ministry, three years, that's how long Jesus had, we're talking about calling a pastor and wanting him here for longer than three years. That's all Jesus gave us, three years. And yet Jesus taught so much and lived so much. 
he taught the countercultural lessons of life, things that went against the culture of his day and really goes against human nature, such as the first shall be last and the last shall be first. If you want to be forgiven, you must forgive. How many times must I forgive? Seven times 70. The master shall be the servant. Love your enemies and do good to those who persecute you. Awkward. All awkward at one time or another. And living as Christ followers means that we will be making choices and decisions that go against the grain of society or even our own nature. There will be awkward times and feelings as we try to live out our faith in this world by turning the other cheek. Loving our neighbor, especially those that we don't like. Worshiping God continually. Making sacrifices to honor God and to honor the church that God has given us. So I invite you this day to think about this awkwardness as we try to live into this calling of faith. Don't push it away. Don't ignore it. Sit with it. And maybe even embrace it as the holy that it is. Well, following the worship service today, and after we've celebrated and welcomed our new members through a wonderful fellowship time, a congregational meeting will be called to order. This special congregational meeting was called today for you to vote on your next settled pastor. These are exciting times for LCM, and it's holy time. There has been a lot of work from you and a lot of prayers from you, this community, to get to this point. The nominating team worked to put together a transition team and a call committee made up of folks from all walks of life who are members of this church. Then those two groups were voted on and approved in a congregational meeting. The transition team went to work first, putting in months of work, guiding you through the process of talking about who you were, who you are, and who you want to be. Uncovering some of the ick, some of the dirt, the hurt, and also welcoming talk of yearnings, of hopes, of dreams, of what God's ministry at LCM might be. And then when their work was completed, in a meeting which included the church council, transition team, call committee, and a representative from the office of the bishop, uh, the baton was passed to the call committee, who then began months of work and finishing up the paperwork. And oh my goodness, is there paperwork. It's also known as the ministry site profile, and it's about 20 pages long. And they, then they faithfully reviewed clergy resumes, which are also lots of papers. It's not just a simple resume. They're about 20 pages long, too. They're called rostered leaders profile. And they reviewed and interviewed and prayed and discussed, and then put forward, strongly put forward the candidate that is the, they feel is the right person for God's ministry at LCM at this time. It's a bold choice for a bold ministry. And mostly behind the scenes, your council has worked hard and diligently and faithfully to take care of all of the many things that needed to be tended to. And there have been many. They take care of the big picture and all of the little details, too numerous to name. And on this past Wednesday, there was a meet and greet churchwide for the pastoral candidate. I understand that many of you came and were here, were represented. So I'm so glad. Well done. I've been asked a few times if I was going to be there like last Wednesday or if I've met the pastor yet. And someone even expressed that it would be awkward, there's that word again, awkward for me to be there. And I want to say to you, this is not awkward for me. 
It's not. This is a time of rejoicing and, dare I say, pride. Not too much because I'm Lutheran after all. But pride in you for the steps and the hard work that you have undertaken. I came here to be your intentional interim pastor during this season of transition. That was my call, and it's my calling. So it's not awkward for me. And I don't want it to be awkward for you. Y'all, it's not like we're getting a divorce and you're meeting the new new partner, you know. It's not... This is precisely what I was called for and what I've worked towards. It could be likened to a school teacher who finishes with one class and sends them on to the next grade with hope and memories and a prayer. Being with you in 2010 and 2011 as I fulfilled the sentence requirements to serve another internship. Returning from my ordination in this worship space, with you in 2013, and then being able to serve in God's ministry at LCM these past 19 months. It's been amazing. It's been a great, amazing time. And it's added patches to my, to our quilt of sacred things. So whatever feelings you have, even if awkward is still among those, sit with them. Listen to them and embrace them as a gift from God. And open your hearts and your minds and your souls to the possibilities in which God may be leading you next. It's exciting and scary and thrilling and, yes, maybe a little awkward at the same time, thinking about what might be. You are God's beloved children called to love God and called to love one another and to love the folks out there awkwardly, generously, faithfully. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. We'll sing.
You may be seated. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation. The following people have indicated their desire to join in with the community of Lutheran Church of the Master. And when you're called, please come forward. Gay Dugan, Mary Ann and Russ McKenzie, Sari Warren, Ginger and Richard Playford, Mary Beth Beach. Yeah. I'll have you turn and face, let's face me first to start with. You're fine. You can just circle around. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> in baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called in covenant to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? If so, respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. To the congregation, people of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. I'll have you turn and face the congregation now. Let us welcome these sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, to this community of faith. We We rejoice rejoice with you in the life of baptism. baptism. Together we we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the the world. So let's show them our welcome in a fashioned way. There's a... Yes, wave your palms. That's great. Hosanna. There's a new member's garden in the back there and presents for you and cards. And we are delighted to have you join officially. (laughs) I didn't say finally. You said that. Officially as a new member in the Lutheran Church of the Master. Thanks. 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 And we're going to share the peace now since they're up here and you'll want to greet them as well. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let's share that peace with one another. So.
we will, con we will continue with the prayers of intercession. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Save your church, O oh God. Enable us to boldly confess in every time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other ministry settings to proclaim your extravagant love for all. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy, Lord. Hosanna, son of David. Lead your children to care for your good creation and all its inhabitants, lands, waters, plants, and all living creatures. Hear us, O God. Soften the hearts of political leaders who ignore or deny suffering, struggle, and injustice. Lift up leaders who seek your will for the sake of their people. Hear us, O God. Bring companionship to those who feel abandoned, comfort to those in pain, hope to those in despair, and healing to all in need. We especially remember those on LCM's prayer list and for those whom we pray aloud for or in our hearts. We lift prayers for Pam's mother, who recently entered the hospital. We give prayers of healing and hope and comfort for victims of gun violence. We pray for the family and friends of Johnny Moser, who passed away on Tuesday. We pray for those who have joined this church as members in faith. May your blessings rain down as we forge unity in this community. Bless the one who will be LCM's next settled pastor and prepare us to be agents of change and grace. Hear us, O oh God. Walk with this community as we remember your life-giving passion and death. Send us forth burning with desire to share your word with a hurting world. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There are offering plates in the, on the tables in the back of the worship space. If you would like to give your gift to God's ministry here at LCM to keep this ministry going. There's also ways you can look in your bulletin how to give online as well, too. We'll pray now. God of mercy and grace, the, the eyes, eyes of, of all, all wait, wait upon, upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Jesus shared his meals with all kinds of people, doubters, believers, skeptics, rich and poor, leaders and followers, scholars and fishermen and tax collectors, palm wavers and parade watchers. He calls us all to come, taste, and see that God is good that there is enough for everyone, that there is another way. This is the table where all kinds of people from all kinds of places and all kinds of times throughout the years meet. This table does not belong to me. It does not belong to Lutheran Church of the Master. It does not belong to the greater Lutheran Church. It belongs to Christ. And it is Christ who promises to meet us here. This is the table where we can begin a journey 
where we can make a turn, where we can be strengthened for the road ahead. So come, not because you understand, but because you want to know God more. Come, not because you love God a lot, but because you love God a little and want to love more. Come, not because your faith is unshakable, but because you could use some strength for the journey. Come, not because you're already perfect and worthy, but because it is Christ himself who invites us to share in this feast. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace from today to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, as the disciples ate and drank with their risen Lord, we have been nourished with the very presence of Christ. Through this meal, may we be strengthened to keep your word and to proclaim the power of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Following uh, the closing song and the blessing, you're invited to stay back here and have refreshments, greet our new members, greet one another, catch up, and then uh, Don, what time? 10.20? Okay, 10.20. Uh, those of you who are voting members, if you'll gather back here, and then we'll move forward with our congregational meeting. So stand as you're able, and we'll sing. from joy into sorrow and on to elation. We come to Christ this holy week. Today is only a part of the story. Jesus' triumph leads to his death, his death to his resurrection. May the journey of this week lead you into the fullness of Christ's love. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.